we can start. Good evening, everyone. Your eminences, dear fathers, brothers and sisters. Uh, my name is Rostislav Urubi. I am the priest of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine. And I'm here I'm today, thanking to Professor Vasiliadis, who asked me to replace Father Andrew Duchenko, who wasn't able to join and to be coordinator of this meeting. Thank you for this opportunity. And uh, as you all, everybody knows, uh, that this year, uh, this academical year, uh, the open published lectures of Center of Ecumenical, Missiological and, and Environmental Studies uh, are devoted to very important topic, which sounds like Eastern Oriental Orthodox and Latin Greek, uh, Greek uh, Latin Greek Catholic traditions in hope to look for and to restore visible unity of the Church of Christ. And uh, today we are about to listen the presentation of person who here in Ukraine is one of the most experienced one who are ready to share with his own experience. Uh, Father Dr. Ihor Shaban, Allow me to introduce him briefly. Father Ihor is a graduate of Lublin University of Poland and St. Basil College of Stanford in USA. He holds PhD in theology and uh, accomplished this, his, this doctoral, his doctoral degree in ecumenical, uh, excuse me, in the uh, Ecumenical Institute of uh, uh, Catholic University of Lublin. And today, uh, Father Ihor is a professor of ecumenical ecclesiology at Ukrainian Greek Catholic Seminary in Kyiv. And also he's a chairman of the Commission of, uh, for Interreligious Dialogue and Ecumenical Affairs of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. And uh, I'm honored to give the floor to Father Ihor and ask him to make his presentation. Father Ihor, please, you're welcome. Thank you, Father Rostislav. Hope you can hear me. And I'm first of all, first, firstly, I'm sorry for my English. It's not the language I'm using every day. So some words should be not very good pronounced. Um, ecumenical relations of the Greek Catholic Church. The Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church is traditionally characterized by two aspects. On the one hand, having a historical connection with uh, her mother church, the Church of Constantinople, and being a legitimate successor of the historical Kievan metropolia, Greek Catholics belongs to the Christian East, preserving and fostering Eastern spirituality, liturgical life, and Byzantine rite. On the other hand, the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church enjoys full communion with the Bishop of Rome and with other self-governing Catholic churches, which unites more than 50% of all Christians in the world. And for the beginning, let me say a few words about starting Christianity in Kiev and Rus. Um, the creation of the Kievan metropole as part of the Patriarchate of Constantinople at the end of the 10th century connected Rus to the Christian civilization, but mainly to the Byzantine Eastern Christian world. At that time, Christianity was officially adopted as a state religion in 988 less than 100, 100 years before the great schism between Constantinople and Rome happened. Therefore, the newly created Kievan metropolis was in unity with its mother church of Constantinople 
and with the Bishop of Rome at the same time. In addition, the schism that happened in 1054 between Constantinople and Rome was not immediately reflected in Kiev's relations with other Christian centers. Even in 1245, Metropolitan of Kiev Petro Akerovich participated in the Council of Lyon, and during the Council he served along with other bishops and Pope Innocent IV. From the middle of the 14th century, some lands of Kiev and Rus were occupied by the territory of Lithuania and Polish Kingdom, and some by Moscow. Because of the Kiev and Metropoli found themselves in three different political entities, but tried to continue to be as one church structure. But the situation in the Kiev and Metropoli radically changed after the Ferrara, Ferrara Florence Council, which took place in 1438 and 39. Before that time, Constantinople appointed a new metropolitan to Kiev named Isidor. He, together with a delegation from the Kiev and Metropoli, went to a council in Italy and signed a decree of union as the metropolitan of Kiev. In general, the Ruthenian people cordially greeted the metropolitan. On February 5th, 1441, the Act of Union on, of Florence was read at the Kiev and St. Sophia Cathedral. On March of that year, the Metropolitan went to Moscow, where he celebrated the Divine Liturgy in the Cathedral of the Moscow Kremlin and mentioned the Bishop of Rome. This began strong antipathy, and he was even imprisoned for some period of time. After all these events, Moscow political leaders decided to break unity with Constantinople, and in 1448, local Bishop Yona was elected as new Moscow Metropolitan, without the permission of Constantinople. So in the post-Florence era, the division of the Kievan metropoly into Kiev and Moscow ended for good. This time, under conditions of internal crisis, a weakening of the patriarchal center of Constantinople, the challenge of the Protestant Reformation and post-Tridentine Catholicism, the hierarchy of the Kievan church in 1596, seeking in the spirit of the union tradition of Florence to fulfill Christ's commandment that all may be one, adopted a decision to restore Eucharistic communion with the Bishop of Rome, ensuring the preservation of its Eastern traditions as well as its own ecclesiastical and ethnocultural identity. It is true that part of the Ukrainian faithful decided to save their canonical affiliation with the Patriarchate of Constantinople, succeeded in having consecrated a parallel hierarchy, not in union with the Bishop of Rome, and received official re recognition of its separate jurisdiction in 1632. Unfortunately, the division of the body of the Church of Kiev never had united again. However, in 1686, the Kievan Orthodox Metropolia was joined to the Patriarchate of Moscow. Besides this, up to the end of the 18th century, the Kievan church territory was divided once more among Austrian and Russian empire. In these kingdoms, the Uni Uniat church 
plate of Greek Catholics, experience radically different chances. One, on, on the territories of Austrian Empire, the Uniat Church received the support of the state and since the time got new names as Greek Catholics. That was given to the Church of Kievan tradition by, 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 by Austrian government. It is a name still used today in Ukraine. By contrast, in the Russian control lands, Uniat Church was completely destroyed. For example, in 1874, in the village of Pratulin, today Poland, the church community, which did not want to join the mosque of orthodoxy, gathered in front of the church and tried to prevent the Russian soldiers from entering. In response, the military opened fire, killing 13 and wounding 180 persons. All who died were canonized by the Greek Catholics in, as martyrs. Later, with full occupation of Ukraine by Soviet armies, especially after the World War II, Russian state authorities began to put pressure on the Ukrainian Greek Catholic bishop to liquidate the Union of Brest. When they refused, they were arrested, the bishops, and set, sent to prison camps in Siberia or tortured and some were killed. A great number of Ukrainian Greek Catholics immigrated at that time and organi organized its structures all over the world. In Canada, today we have Metropoli with the five eparchies. In USA, today we have Metropoli and four eparchies. In Europe, right now we have five eparchies, several eparchies in Argentina, Australia, and Brazil. Inside Soviet Ukraine, church services were driven underground. It was since December 1989, during the general liberalization of Soviet life. Thanks to the grace of God and because of its unity with Bishop of Rome, Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church was able not only to survive in difficult historical circumstances, but indeed was able to enrich its ecclesial thoughts through constant dialogue with the churches of the West. Naturally, the difficulties which the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church experienced in its relations with the Latin Church, especially through various forms of jurisdictional control, were reflected on the body of the Greek Catholics in real hearts. However, it must be acknowledged that in periods of administrative weakness of the Greek Catholic Church, this suppression played an important role in strengthening and even protecting the church. On the basis of this experience, the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church is firmly convinced that communion with the Bishop of Rome, as with the savor of faith, as St. Ignatius of Antiochia say, can today become an expression of ecumenical orthodoxy, of undivided Christianity, as it existed in the first millennium where all of the churches were Orthodox in faith and Catholics in love. Today, the Greek Catholics has third position in the Ukraine state by the number of the Christians. After the Ukrainian Orthodox Church in unity with the Moscow Patriarchate and the Orthodox Church of Ukraine. So more than 70% of the population consider themselves confessionally as orthodox. But it should be noted that 59% of those who consider themselves religiously orthodox are not practicing and uh, are convinced that a person can be simply believer 
and not confess a particular denomination. According to the statistics, Greek Catholic structure unites about 5.5 million believers in Ukraine. It is around, you, you can hear different kind of percent, but it is around 10% of population, plus 2 million abroad. We have 36 eparchies with 64 bishops all around the world. It has about 4,500 religious communities, more than 100 monasteries, 16 religious educational institutions with more than 2,000 students. Understanding the importance of the task that all should be one, that was set by the Lord, the Greek Catholics sincerely looking for to restore Christian unity that was during great Prince Volodymyr, when the church was one and undivided, Orthodox and Catholics in full unity and communion with the universal church and all the self-governing churches of the East and West. That is why the majority of Greek Catholics sincerely and prayfully supported the Mother Church of Constantinople in its efforts to provide a Thomas on Aftokifale to the Orthodox Church of Ukraine. This is undoubtedly an important step in overcoming the split between Orthodox churches and the liberation of Ukraine Orthodoxy from isolation. Also, it is important to note that the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church was not directly involved in this process of the Orthodox churches. Because sometimes we hear these rumors that we are involved in that, it's not true. Today in the Ukrainian context, the churches can freely begin to jointly search for the models of unity by cooperation in different areas of their services to God and people. Ukrainian churches already have all the attributes of autokephaly and self-governing because the head of the Greek Catholics, like the head of the Orthodox Church of Ukraine, live, lead, and pray in the center of the state, Kyiv. The fact that they are open to other centers, let's say Constantinople or Rome, does not make them either dependent or subordinated to anyone. The Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church as sui iuris church, that means of its own right, is not part of the Latin Patriarchate, just as the Orthodox Church of Ukraine is not part of the Patriarchate of Constantinople, but in full communion with the Patriarchs of the East, just as the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church is in communion with the Bishop of Rome. Easteringly, East, interestingly, Metropolitan Emmanuel, Emmanuel Adamaskis, in his welcome words after the entronization of Metropolitan Epiphanius in 2019, emphasized that the throne of Constantinople is the most important among of all the Orthodox churches. In this way, Metropolitan Emmanuel in some way pointed out the importance of the role of the protos, primacy, in the Christian world. Such knowledge about, about the importance of the service of the protos for the unity for the Church of Christ opens up new opportunities for Catholics and Orthodox to pray together around one table. In our understanding, it does not require more than we already have or declare. We need to have the same faith, have the same understanding of the Holy Sacraments, obey your bishop who has an apostolic tradition, and be in communion with the Bishop of Rome who is a visible sign of the unity and protos from the very beginning. As Maximus the Confessor, or Maximus the Theologian, 
wrote in fifth century in his theological and polemic works, all Christian churches have accepted and continue to accept as true that great church, which is in Rome, the only based institution and foundation. I'm sure that today between Orthodox and Catholics, there is one faith, one understanding of the sacraments, and one canonical hierarchy. But there is still a different understanding of the role of the Bishop of Rome. Without unity with him, any local church cannot be called universal. Such an understanding is a key element for the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. The Bishop of Rome, as the successor of the Apostle Peter in the first millennium, was accepted by Christians as the highest arbiter of the Church of Christ. According to the old rule in Latin, Nemo Iudex in Casa Sua, that means literally, no one is judged in his own case. It is to Bishop of Rome. Christ in entrusted to support the faith of brothers, Evangelia Luca 22, and to lead them into perfect unity, Evangelia John 21. According to all this knowledge, we can say that Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church is the Orthodox Church in full and visible communion with the Roman Apostolic See. But at the same time, Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church is feeling sorrowful to lose the Eucharistic communion with its mother church of Constantinople. This is explained by our open heart and friendly hand extended to the Orthodox brothers to preserve and make deeper communication. This may also explain of a current desire to start an, all, an already de- desirable dialogue with the Orthodox churches in Ukraine. But the main difficulty in building a fruitful dialogue with the Orthodox world in Ukraine is the fact of the painful division within Ukrainian Orthodoxy itself. Plus, According to the context of the modern universal ecumenical movement of the whole Church of Christ, we must remember and respect the position of the world practice of the whole universal dialogue. As we read in the scripture that the Apostle John was so enthusiastic to see that the Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected that he ran first to the tomb, but did not enter. He waited for the Apostle Peter. Therefore, we have a duty to respect and honor the position of the Roman Apostolic See and Church of Constantinople. Full unity among all Christians in Ukraine will be possible when the ecumenical process is crowned at the universal level by the restoration of Eucharistic communion between Rome and Constantinople. But global competence is the capacity to examine local ecumenical issue. So right after the creation of the Orthodox Church Church of Ukraine and its reception, the Thomas of Avtokifali, the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church proposed to the Orthodox Church of Ukraine to start deeper communication with each other. His Beatitude Svetoslav Shevchuk even had proposed to Metropolitan Epiphanius to draw up a common roadmap to examine where the two churches could work together in the name of the common good and common heritage. But these ecumenical initiatives was accepted with a little enthusiasm. And I can say honestly, I am not very satisfied today with our forms and the level of cooperation in general. 
Metropolitan Epiphany demonstrates that his church is playing a leading and unique role in Ukraine religious life. It seems that after getting official of the Epiphany status, the Orthodox Church of Ukraine does not want to develop any relationship with Greek Catholics. Contacts with, as sometimes calling uniats, is now understood as having a negative impact on the recognition process by other Orthodox churches. However, getting back to present, present days, it is important to illustrate that every year the Greek Catholics organize an ecumenical prayer service during the week of prayers for Christian unity where clergy and lay people of different denominations are invited to participate. Such ecumenical play, prayers took place this year in all Greek Catholic eparchies, where the quarantine restriction all of it. And thanks to Father Rostislav, he was to, at that day with us and prays with us also. During last year, the Greek Catholic Ecumenical Commission produced a series of unique seminars and conversation, where theologians and clergy from all branches of Ukrainian Christianity comes together in a dialogue and created atmosphere of friendship. Over the past year, the Greek Catholics has directed its major attention to the ecumenical formation of priest and laity. This text, task is important for several reasons. Priests are playing a primary role in shaping the, the views of the faithful with regards to the ecumenical issue. At the request of the Greek Catholics, eparchial ecumenical officers, Patriarchal Ecumenical Commission has launched the ecumenical formation program for clergy and laity interested in ecumenical topics. Besides that, the Greek Catholics launched a program to support ecumenical mini project in order to promote friendship and cooperation between parishes and communities belonging to various denominations. Applicants were invited to elaborate joint social or educational project, such as acting together to solve community problems, ecological and human rights initiatives, lectures and workshop for different communities. This is an important encouragement of practical cooperation between denominations, a true, true ecumenism of friendship. It will also contribute to changing the perception of ecumenism as a matter of exclusively church diplomacy or abstract theology and promote it as an ethos of church life. The Greek Catholic Church is a global church and it is ecumenical activity is not limited only within Ukraine. Accordingly, certain bishops and priests represent the Greek Catholic Church and searching new models of dialogue at various international forums. In particular, in the ongoing project the International Group Reconciliation in Europe, the task of churches in Ukraine, Belarus, Poland, and Germany, a group that brings together official representatives of the Orthodox, Lutheran, Roman Catholics, and Greek Catholic Church in Central and Eastern Europe. In addition, during the long period of time, the Greek Catholic Church maintains constant cooperation with the Pontifical Council for Promotion of Christian Unity and with the Council of Catholic Bishop of Europe, CCEE, and would like to work more closely with the Commission for Episcopate of the European Union, COMETC. This idea of searching new models of cooperation, the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church continues in its public well-known documents ecumenical position of the Greek Catholics. It can be considered as kind of program of the ecumenical movement of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, 
and not only inside Ukraine, but everywhere where our faithful around the world live and pray. The text consists of three main parts, historical, theological, and practical. It describes the task facing the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church in its ecumenical relations with other local churches, illustrates modern relations with the Roman Apostolic See, declares the relations with the Orthodox churches and Protestant communities. If someone will be interested, it is online. Especially in documents in paragraph 50 in this ecumenical position, according to its relations to Ukrainian Orthodoxy, the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church welcomes the unification of the previously divided Orthodox churches into a single Orthodox Church of Ukraine, which received from the ecumenical patriarch Thomas on Autokephaly and considers it a significant step toward achieving internal unity among Orthodox Christians of Ukraine and an important step toward full unity of the Kievan Church. The Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church declared its position of non-interference in internal Orthodox misunderstandings. But at the same time, the Greek Catholics are open to dialogue and cooperation with all Orthodox churches in Ukraine, regardless of their jurisdiction, because openness and censored dialogue are important tools that can help find understanding and unity. Also, last year, for the first time in Ukraine, a complete collection of documents of the Joint International Commission for Dialogue between the Catholic and Orthodox churches was presented in Ukrainian translation. It is good base for continuing to seek the way of implement the achievements of the Joint International Commission to the future dialogue within local Ukraine circumstances. If I still have time, I can tell a few words about three significant events of Greek Catholics we commemorated in the last year. First of all, we commemorated the 75th anniversary of the infamous Rio Pseudo Council of 1946, during which the, our church was officially liquidated by act of, I can say it, Orthodox Uniatism of Moscow Patriarchate. When the secret archives of the security service of Ukraine were opened, our historians and scientists were finally able to study certain secret documents and present and present the fruit of their works. It was a very emotional view, which documented that the Lviv Pseudo Council was not only a church event, it was an event mostly orchestrated, modelled, and carried out by the state repressive machine of the Soviet regime. The second anniversary we commemorate this year is the 425th anniversary of the Brest Union. That anniversary a little bit provoked us to rethink very deep questions, in particular, whether such church unity is something to look for, or rather leave it in the past and say we no longer need it. What is true that everyone talks about the unity to the churches, prayers for it, but does not see a way to active it, cannot propose any new model of unity. So it is very important today to look for it together and work on it. In this context, it should be interesting to memorize an interesting event that happened more than 30 years ago, right after Balamand meeting, when the head of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church at that time, 
his beatitude Miroslav Ivan Lubachevsky wrote an open letter to Cardinal Edward Idris Cassidy on matter of uniatism. His beatitude Lubachevsky officially reject uniatism as a method of the past. Also in his letter, he stressed difference between the method and the model should have been made. Since method speaks of the means of unification, whereas model unity refers to the end or result. One cannot change historical events and method of the past, but it is possible to change the results of uniatism. In other words, it is possible to change the model. This involves not only a commitment on the past of Eastern Catholics to rediscover their, their own theological and spiritual heritage, but also a commitment on the part of the Sea of Rome to change the canonical relationship between itself and the Eastern Catholic churches. So that indeed, they may become an acceptable ecclesiological model for the Orthodox today. And the third significant event that we can draw attention to was the decade of the creation of three new metropoli in Ukraine, Lviv, Frankivsk, and Ternopil. In my opinion, the celebration of the 10th anniversary of our metropolitans is a good opportunity to see how our church has grown over the 10 years. It is important to explain that a metropolitan is one who has a certain metropolitan as a separate ecclesiological province. During these 10 years, our local church in Ukraine and all over the world has grown a lot. New church structures have been proclaimed also abroad. The metropolitan in Brazil, the third, di the third eparchy in Poland, the exarchate in Italy. So the year 2021 encouraged us to think about what happened 425 years ago when we re-entered the world arena and the local church became part, became part of universal Christianity. We remembered what drove us underground 75 years ago, and we looked at Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church in retrospect over the 10 years journey. So this year was an interesting time, a time of rethinking and research, a time of trying to find new models of church communion. After all, it was time to go online and partly go offline. We got experience in how to be a church in a new way, in accordance with a new social, historical, cultural, and even epidemiolog epidemiological circumstances. But we are developed, we work, we serve our people no matter where they are. No one knows what the future of the Orthodox Catholic dialogue will be like. <clears throat> Nevertheless, we know in what di direction this dialogue should develop. Its goal was and remains to restore full and visible unity between the Western and Eastern churches. And even if the world thinks differently and the search for the unity is sometimes understood as a certain danger, as a loss of one's identity, our idea and our search for unity of the divided church today is still our test. Thank you so much for your listening. Thank you, dear Father Igor, for your presentation. Um, I believe uh, Father Igor will agree with me for our sorrow that uh, Orthodox, both Orthodox and Catholics, believers of uh, Ukraine were not able to 
took took a part to take a part in the official orthodox catholic dialogue because at uh, the president reagan it's so precisely said that at that time the empire of evil still existed and after the iron wall was breakthrough and ukraine restored uh, its historical and political independence that was a moment of opportunity to take a deep breath and to uh, start to restore our spiritual and uh, confessional life and this is the moment when the greek catholic church restored his uh, its official status in ukraine and started to acting freely and openly but nevertheless uh, i aware that uh, most of you are uh, knowing about the circumstances which uh, were supporting uh, and surrounding to be honest the process of receiving of autocephaly from the his all holiness uh, patriarch bartholomew and uh, the holy synod of uh, bishops of mother constantinopolitan church when in the moment when his all holiness declared that he is about to uh, start the process of granting the thomas of about autocephaly to the orthodox church of ukraine we we have the ukrainian and russian ukrainian war since 2014 but to the, since 2018 we have received another war informative war in addition to the military confrontation that we already had and uh, just to the moment of the unifying of and uh, council in the cathedral of saint sophia in kiev and even after we have uh, some different struggling and fighting even from the inner enemies which is our deep sorrow. But nevertheless, the Church of, of Ukraine still goes on and uh, trying to find its openness to the ecumenical dialogue. And Ukraine has its, its own unique experience of the acting and doing within the uh, pan-Ukrainian pan Council of Churches and Religious Organizations, which is quite important uh, tool to meet each other and to do something for in, for the sake of Ukrainian society and confessions. So I would like to thank Father Ihor once more uh, for his presentation and uh, also to give a floor to Professor Vasiliadis to make some notes or commenters. I, I would ask you to do that. I would like also to thank both uh, the coordinator, but especially uh, Father Ihor for this uh, um, very important and detailed presentation of uh, <clears throat> not only the um, ecumenical uh, perspective of his church, but also the historical, he gave us the historical background, which is very important to be heard uh, uh, in to, at least in today's discussion. <laughs> um, Father Augustinus has to go to uh, for an obligation he has, uh, and we will leave time for his uh, final mm -hmm. comment. But I would like also at this uh, stage to uh, welcome. Um, uh, both um, uh, my colleague uh, Andre Kravchuk uh, from the other side of the Atlantic. We are um, uh, know each other, but also our Latin Catholic, uh, very ecumenically, of course, oriented uh, um, member of this um, group. Uh, um, Reverend uh, Dr. Adalberto uh, Mainardi. So we will have uh, a, a full uh, uh, discussion from all quarters. I would like now to make uh, my uh, two or three um, 
uh, important uh, comments, uh, uh, agreeing and further <coughs> uh, promoting what um, Father Ihor, Ihor uh, have said. I was uh, honored to be invited by his help and be given this uh, important uh, booklet uh, in Ukrainian language and in English, expressing the, uh, the ecumenical um, uh, attitude of, uh, of his head, of his church. I am very grateful and I read it. Uh, it is uh, an very important, which I would personally subscribe, at least in theological and ecumenical um, points he, this booklet uh, made. Now, I have uh, um, in uh, numerous occasions um, um, underlined the importance of Ukraine and not because of the famous geopolitical status or the autocephaly that it was granted by the ecumenical patriarchate to originally a united Orthodox uh, uh, people in that but uh, it was important in my view, and if uh, th those uh, Ukrainian can um, uh, correct me if I am wrong, I consider Ukraine as, or the geo geographical area of the present independent state of Ukraine, uh, as uh, the uh, important uh, arena in the past of the encounter and class of two main theological and spiritual streams of Christianity, Eastern and Western, and the Greek Catholic um, Ukrainian community, I think uh, can be an instrument towards a future um, rapprochement. And uh, as I said, uh, Ukraine, it is important place uh, because uh, it is uh, an opportunity that this past bleeding wound uh, um, can be healed uh, in the place where the main uh, differences uh, were developed. Of course, the separation started in Constantin between Constantinople and, and Rome. And I said that uh, it was uh, a blessing uh, moment that Pope uh, Paul VI and uh, Patriarch uh, Athena Goras lifted unilaterally the anathemas uh, of that um, uh, 11th uh, uh, century, early in, in the 11th century. Uh, but uh, the problem is that um, uh, the new situation which was um, presented by Father Ihor in Ukraine, especially after the granting or before, a little bit before the granting of autocephaly to the Orthodox, uh, um, also um, there, is, uh, there was uh, um, a wider ecumenical revival. And uh, as I said, ironically enough, with the contribution of the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, uh, uh, and not only between um, the Ukrainians, but also uh, as uh, he presented, uh, especially in building bridges between Rome and Constantinople. So the Ukrainian Catholic community for nearly let's half a millennium, a problem in the Ukrainian Russian history uh, has suddenly emerged as one of the main players in fostering ecumenical relations. Um, Father Ihor mentioned the, the signing in 2014, the famous memorandum of a single and unified Ukrainian autocephalous Orthodox Church, but most importantly, in a survey under the title, What the Orthodox Church of Ukraine and the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church can teach each other, um, especially following the announcement of the Ecumenical Patriarchate's determination to grant on autocephaly, the Ukrainian Greek Catholics did not hesitate to answer, and I quote, and I think this is important, and see how we can 
promote this further. Broad participation in church government, end of quote. Something so important in the, and I quote again, venerable Orthodox tradition. And after the ecumenical patriarchate invited ordinary clergy and laity, in addition to bishops to the September 15 Unification Council, they also declared without neglecting the conciliar tradition of the Catholic Church, the Greek Catholic uh, said, or the, the primate of it, the Greek Catholic Ukrainian Church can also learn from the strong Orthodox tradition of synodality and lay participation. Now with Pope Francis initiating or having initiated this process two years or more perhaps of uh, renewing the synodality of the church, uh, it is a great opportunity um, uh, for uh, this uh, um, uh, rapprochement between uh, Rome and Constantinople, Catholic and Orthodox Church, but also in addition, um, as I said, um, uh, our center, which uh, is organizing this kind of open public lectures, uh, is determined to, with the blessing, of course, of um, the ecclesiastical authorities, to uh, enter into a direct dialogue, not through the Catholic Church, between orthodoxy and Greek Catholicism. Because uh, uh, not like uh, uh, the, the general atmosphere in Ukraine, but in Greece, um, the relations are much, much more better. And I wouldn't uh, say, uh, uh, more than uh, res recite um, uh, the understanding uh, of the origin of unitism uh, by an orthodox, an orthodox of Russian, a Russian historic, historian and theologian of Ukrainian origin, born because he was born in Odessa, the late father George Florovsky, who has stated in his chapter on unitism, of the second part of the book, uh, Ways of Russian Theology, translated into English, also uh, written in Russian, with the following very positive assessment. <clears throat> the unia, he said, and I quote, was less an act of religious choice than cultural and political self-determination. Neither reasons of faith nor of doctrine were fundamental to the cessation of the bishops those days. The early units were quite sincere in contending that, and they quote, they did not change the faith. They felt they were only transferring jurisdiction and seem really to have believed that the Latin faith and the Greek faith were identical. This is almost the result of the present day um, um, official theological dialogue can also su subscribe. And um, uh, what uh, Father Ihor presented uh, was uh, also um, um, declared by Paul, uh, John Paul II, uh, few decades ago, who spoke about Ukraine as the laboratory of ecumenism. And I count very much on this. That's why it, I, I think today's uh, uh, presentation, it is very important to revive this kind of uh, um, um, reconciliation and, and at least the theological um, um, determination uh, to go uh, a further step, to take a further step. And also, this is uh, also acknowledged by the ecumenical patriarch, the present ecumenical patriarch, who um, two uh, decades ago in the festal celebrations in Rome at St. Peter's Cathedral, acknowledged, and I quote Patriarch Bartholomew's um, 
declaration with historic changes. Now that was the historic changes with the independence of Ukraine, especially in the last two years, opportunities for cooperation have been created for the common witness and a deeper unity of our sister churches. End of quote. Not only the um, declaring the Church of Rome as a sister church, but the problem that uh, the opportunities of a common witness and deeper unity are very important. And this is something which we have to revive. I mean, in this present day, um, because uh, not only because uh, the, the initiative by Pope Francis in uh, reviving synodality, but also because of the extremely difficult situations, both in Ukraine and uh, around the Orthodox um, uh, jurisdictions. Uh, and we need to find ways, this is our vision, um, to solve the problems rather than create it more. So this is what I wanted uh, uh, briefly to say. Uh, and uh, I think uh, um, what uh, um, uh, Father Ijo said, that uh, it is important that we consider, that they consider, his church considers as a mother church, not the Church of Rome, but the Church of the ancient Constantinople. This is uh, in addition to um, their connection, the communion connection, um, Eucharistic communion with uh, Rome. Uh, this uh, um, um, belief of their uh, connection with uh, uh, the mother church uh, of Constantinople is uh, something which we have to exploit as much as possible. This is what I wanted to say at this moment. And uh, I leave time at least for the other uh, um, uh, guests in this uh, panel to uh, have further comments. Thank you, Father Rodislav. If anyone has some comments uh, or any other things, please. You are welcome to, to indicate, please, Professor Kravchuk. Thank you, and thank you, Father Ihor, uh, also uh, for a very, very interesting and uh, uh, rich presentation. Uh, I, I'm afraid I don't know how much time we have, so I'll try to limit myself uh, very carefully here. Uh, I think the first uh, point... Before you start, uh, may I, an I announce that uh, in less than a month, uh, uh, Father Andri Kravchuk will give uh, also uh, another important uh, presentation, Orthodox Catholic Relations in Ukraine, <laughs> Diagnosis, Goals and Strategies. Yes, uh, Andrew, please. Thank you. Thank you, Petras, for this advertisement. Um, I think so. My first um, uh, remark is is really a request. Uh, hopefully, we can be in touch uh, either by messenger or or email, Father Ihor. And uh, I would like to uh, have uh, access to this um, ecumenical position that you referred to. You said it's available online. Uh, I would be very very uh, appreciative to be able to. Uh, uh, to read this, also, also uh, your paper. Uh, there is a third document as I prepare my own remarks uh, that I am looking for. You may have access to it, or, or maybe uh, uh, Father Rostislav might uh, know about it. There was in uh, recent years, maybe two or so years ago, a uh, statement, a public uh, or open kind of letter uh, signed by Orthodox uh, intellectuals uh, and uh, theologians, I believe, in um, Ukraine, which uh, repudiated and rejected the pseudo Sobor of 1946. Um, and uh, this is something I'm, I'm, I, I saw it at the time, but I did not, uh, I did not uh, collect it. So if, if uh, 
uh, it's possible to uh, give me the reference to that, I would certainly appreciate it. I apologize for these requests, but uh, I am uh, also preparing my own uh, my own paper now, and I want to take benefit of uh, anything that is uh, uh, important here. I especially appreciate, Father Ihor, your description of the um, ecumenical uh, efforts uh, of the uh, Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church. Um, and uh, it, it really is an important uh, area that needs to be um, kind of celebrated. I think the question that I would have, you mentioned a very important area, the, um, namely the theological formation of priests. And it's very positive and very heartening to know that uh, there is a program of, of uh, ensuring uh, this uh, uh, curriculum um, for uh, priests uh, will include uh, the uh, ecumenical uh, dimension. I am wondering if if this is uh, if I have understood correctly that that this is the part of uh, not just a separate initiative but actually integrally um, kind of a component now of every priest's formation. Is this uh, kind of uh, uh, area of studies an area of uh, current work between Orthodox and Catholic in Ukraine? Um, is, is this something that is now um, uh, part of the formation of every priest in all the seminaries and, and uh, theological academies? Um, and uh, I guess related to that is um, something that I've wondered about. I've been aware of, of course, of the Ukra all Ukraine or pan-Ukrainian council of churches and religious organizations. Uh, but sometimes those dialogues and those conversations, ecumenical ones, um, were kind of uh, not really communicated to the lower levels of the church. So you had the high level representation uh, and um, positions and common position statements uh, issued. Um, and it's something that I've wondered about to what extent is there uh, filtering back of uh, this uh, valuable uh, insights and experience back to uh, the theological academies back to, uh, let's say, the uh, parish level or the, uh, the local level. Uh, so that would be, that would be my uh, area of interest. I would have other questions, but I, I, I'll stop it there and maybe uh, allow for some uh, uh, response if possible. Thank you again. <clears throat> mm, professor, uh, I send you a link in the public chat on the on this uh, reference of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church for the 75th anniversary of the Lviv Council. Okay. Uh, you, you may find it in addition, but it's only Thank in you. Ukrainian, unfortunately, but still still, it's possible to translate. Yes. So Thank if you. anyone has other statements or ads, please, you are welcome. Yes, I, uh, may I speak? Please, please, Professor. I, I would just like to uh, thank both the speakers and particularly Father Igor. I apologize for having joined uh, the meeting later, but I very much appreciated also the conclusion of Father Igor when he says that the goal of uh, Orthodox Catholic dialogue remain, still remains the um, restoration of full com visible community of the two churches and uh, this uh, does mean that uh, the dialogue itself is not something that depends on uh, human efforts but uh, is still a gift of, uh, of the Lord. So the mm, task of the dialogue is to prepare the way and the result is something that will come from from the Lord from above and this double um, line of, of the theological dialogue that is in in theology in problems in uh, theological um, issues but is also 
uh, an openness to the uh, work and uh, of of uh, of the Lord in obedience of uh, His uh, uh, command, and I think this has to to do with the very uh, theological nature of uh, of dialogue. And in this way, the second thing I would like to to say it, it was already remarked by Professor Vasiliadis is the importance and the vocation of the Greek Catholic Church in Ukraine. And perhaps uh, all the church need also a sort of conversion, uh, conversion in the way we look at the Greek Catholic uh, Church in Ukraine from Catholic side, not just uh, a sort of non-Latin church, a sort of um, second, um, Rango Church, but a, a real church uh, with its, his tradition, history, and uh, uh, liturgy and richness is a richness for the Latin Church and is a richness also for the Orthodox Church in perspective of the United uh, Church. We, we, in a form of union, we uh, we do not know how it will uh, it, it will look because the. Theological dialogue is still open, is not a matter of diplomacy or bargaining uh, of interests. That, that's all I would like to say. Thank you. Maybe, maybe Father Agustinos. Yes, uh, thank you, Father Ihor, for your uh, very fr um, interesting and rich uh, presentation that you shared with us. Um, uh, listening to your presentation, I have the I had the, um, the 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 chance to keep some notes and ideas that they came up in my mind. So I would like to share them with you and to have your uh, comment in your final comment, if you wish. So uh, I understood well, and this is my little experience from the ecumenical dialogue which is my expertise that no one is self-sufficient right so uh for me this principle is of fundamental uh, importance in the clinical dialogue that no one is self-sufficient and that we need each other and this principle is based on diversity in unity and unity in diversity in this if we could name it uh, in this on this uh, ecclesiological principle and, uh, and structure, and this uh, unity in diversity and diversity in unity are actually it is gifts. It is a gift coming from God to each and every church. Therefore, there is a rich diversity of Christian life and witness born out of this diversity of cultural and historical context. And I believe this is also the Ukrainian case. And consequently, the gospel itself has to be rooted and lived authentically in each and every place without using, if we could say so, uh, conventional glasses or tools uh, of interpretation. So not to interpret, uh, interpret the, the, the gospel according to our conventional background, but as it is. And I could say, and I understand that this is very difficult to be done by all, because we have our um, backgrounds, each one of us. And also, uh, I think, Father Ukhor, that this is your case as well uh, as in the case uh, of the command of the official theological dialogue be, be, between the Orthodox and the Catholic Church, that as Christian churches, we overemphasize our doctrinal differences, while we do not work together on field on, on on social fields, on where Christians could have a common voice and action, like in the pursuit of justice, peace, decorative creation, and action for the good of all. Uh, of all people, where we should stand all together besides the, the doctrinal uh, differences that we have. So um, I am afraid of those churches that, and this is, uh, please receive it as a moment of self-critics, 
critical uh, criticism uh, that I'm afraid of those churches that are proud of their past, but they negl neglect their present and mostly their future. I see that uh, uh, the difficult time and moments um, are to be uh, are those that we uh, expect to come. So it's important to realize that all Christians participate in some way in Jesus Christ. Although we do not live in full communion, and we have to ac accept that as a fact. And uh, however, the situation of separation among the churches hinders the mission of the church, which mission has its uh, ultimate goal, the unity, the, the kinonia. Mm -hmm. uh, of all, thus mission is related to the very being of the church as kinonia. So you, as well as the Orthodox, need to reflect on how uh, they understand their own ecclesial identity and they regard, uh, they regard the ecclesial status of other churches. So the question of today, which I would like also to pose to you, my dear father, is whether churches can prevent new issues from becoming causes of division within churches, within this uh, secularized society that we, all share, uh, that we all of us share and live. So, and something that uh, I would like also to share with you is that I have the, 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 the feeling that theological uh, differences prevent Ecclesial, ecclesial uh, reciprocity, uh, like uh, Professor Vasiliadis said before, but institutional and political forces and sectors and factors make reciprocity unlikely even in the case of theological agreement. So even if we are in, a, in the same theological line, I, I believe that we still remain uh, not uh, united because of other reasons. So until leaders of local Christian churches uh, to see their members of, uh, as baptized into the whole people of God, into the una sancta, we could say, there will be no visible unity in each place. So that would be, for, for me at least, uh, and I would love to have also your comment, that would be a great first step towards unity, the common recognition at least of baptism in the name of the Holy Trinity, performed by uh, a priest. Uh, and so unity is a spiritual commitment. And uh, that would be, uh, excuse me, dear Father Artus, for the, for, 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 for probably for talking too much. Uh, a proposal to our dialogue uh, to create some sort of ecclesiology of abandoning our, uh, our self-confidence to God's providence. So to give up ourselves to God's hands and not to try to centralize geographically to Rome, to Constantinople or to Moscow or so we do not, or to Jerusalem, to avoid speaking about holy places which sanctify our faith, but to talk about faith itself as we leave it in uh, terms of today. And escaping from the conventional borders in order to reach the full unity in the Holy Commandment. So... Um, the, uh, in, in that context, the ecumenical dialogue must be a process of mutual empowerment and not uh, a methodology or a negotiation between different parties who have conflicting interests and, and claims. And, uh, and I do hope that in the end, we'll be able to recognize the Holy Spirit that is at work in ways that 
go beyond our uh, understanding, go beyond our definitions, descriptions, and limitations that we have all as human beings and creatures. So love, joy, peace, patience, and kindness, where we meet these characteristics and uh, elements of life, there is the Holy Spirit in, in of, of God in work. So I do hope that will be also the case of the Ukrainian uh, churches. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation again. And also I would like to, to have a comment uh, on my these. Father Ihor, Thank you. if you want to, please take floor and give a comment. Can I say something before uh, yes, the definitely. final uh, roundup and the response of Father Ihor? Definitely. Um, in his presentation, uh, he made a complaint that the uh, Orthodox Church of Ukraine uh, has abandoned or at least put aside uh, their previous obligation, previous before the uh, granting of the autocephaly, uh, the obligation of the ecumenical relations. Can you please, uh, uh, Father uh, Rotislav, convey this complaint because it is also our um, um, wish that um, uh, this uh, kind of ecumenical relations by the newly established 15th Autocephalous Church in the Orthodox Church um, should follow the example of the ecumenical patriarchate. Uh, I'm saying this uh, also from my uh, personal um, church experience, the Church of Greece, although spiritually we belong in Thessaloniki, we belong to the Ecumenical Patriarchate, but formally we are uh, uh, in the Church of Greece, does not have um, the ecumenical uh, responsibility we would wish. So we would like uh, uh, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church at least to continue uh, the ecumenical relations because we expect, as I said, uh, too much from the Ukrainian Christianity to the journey towards the Eucharistic Union. Thank you for this yes, uh, reminding. <laughs> yes, please. Um, uh, I would uh, try to, to, to speak briefly. Um, speaking about uh, the Ukrainian Orthodoxy, you have to make some clarification about the branches of the Orthodoxy. As you may realize and remember, in the Unifying Councils, uh, it, it was the idea to gather all three branches of the Ukrainian uh, Orthodox believers. That uh, means the one church, it, uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church in the, in the jurisdiction of Moscow Patriarchate, which I belonged to. Uh, before council because I was a uh, that that small part which uh, which came to, uh, and replied to the call of the his all holiness because uh, I was also the first secretary of the unifying council it is my personal matter of proud but I'm just two bishops on the metropolitan Simon and the metropolitan Alexandros and uh, that moment I was his secretary so this is we were all just small part of Moscow Patriarchate on the unifying council uh, on the other hand, uh, there was a two uh, on the time schismatic churches, it, uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Kiev Patriarchate and another Ukrainian Orthodox Autocephalous Church. And uh, all three churches were represented in the this, uh, area of the Pan Ukrainian Orthodox Council of Churches and Religious Organizations. And um, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church of Kiev Patriarchate, it was uh, the most um, initiative and active church in that area. But uh, after, um, after we, we, you know, Church of Moscow Patriarchate is always was like a little, as you say, just a bit aside. Uh, we took a part, but not very actively. So this is this is truth. Uh, but. Um, 
as I said before, I mentioned that um, after the, the Ukrainian Orthodox Church had received the Thomas about autocephaly, we also received another war, another propaganda on the side of Moscow Patriarchate about the um, uh, conversion of the Ukrainian Orthodox Church to Greek mm. Catholicism. Mm -hmm. And we also had the, the problems with the, our hierarchs. You may know about that, uh, but we have also met former metropolitan or former Petra of Philaret, it's, it's kind of problematic because in the middle of 2019, we had strong uh, problems within and uh, praise be to God, because it's only his and Holy Spirit's uh, doing about to, to preserve all that thing, including the authority of his All Holiness Patriarch Bartholomew. And, uh, but church is safe and still bishops is uh, moving around this, uh, the primate metropolitan Epiphanius. It's, uh, it's our just praise be to God. But uh, at the same time, there arise uh, another dangerous, it's in the pandemia. And all this situation, in, in, including the synodal commissions, which, uh, for example, liturgical, canonical, and uh, liturgical commission of the ecumenian uh, ecumenical uh, and inter-christian dialogue which i am the secretary in so everything is just mm, not even start to develop to open its own work and really because of that and because of especially because of propaganda because of recognition of other orthodox churches in the official level i i i i suspect that this is moment of ecumenical acting and doing in the Orthodox Church in Ukraine, just really just step aside because uh, the huge and just large problems uh, rose in front of us and the Metropolitan Epiphanius just trying to, to handle and to, to, to resolve many, many, many problems. But I also would like to thank to Father Agostinos because I am fully agree because we have to just speak about our faith from the perspective of our faith but not only from perspective of, of our richness of our history and our previous did we had only to together and to move forward to be inspired by the his all holiness better Bartholomew, because his personal example it's just some kind of terrific especially in his visit to ukraine this summer of the last year it was just strongly fraternal and pat patriarchal blessing to Ukrainian church to showing and to inspire to mutual recognition but uh, also oh, you, oh, you, Orthodox Church of Ukraine just have to implement and to step forward to that he, all His Holiness said please thank you for uh, thank you thank you Father Rochislava um, uh, I fully agree that the pastoral problem made uh, the um, Orthodox uh, Church in Ukraine to be a little bit um, uh, distance from this ecumenical uh, revival. And I also uh, understand also the Russians, all the, uh, the entire uh, Rosh, um, because they have developed their identity in contradiction to what happened in uh, the so-called uh, unit uh, schism or uh, separation. I understand this, but um, we should never, as you said, uh, be trapped by the propaganda, uh, the, because the propaganda is also against the ecumenical patriarchate and, and against us, that we are almost unions, because uh, they don't follow, we don't follow uh, the, their understanding of orthodoxy. Uh, so this is uh, 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 very good what you said, and um, I think uh, uh, when Father uh, Ihor will uh, uh, respond, the, make the final response, take this into consideration, um, because uh, I was very um, uh, worried about uh, this kind of uh, um, abandoning this spirit of ecumenical uh, revival in the country. Thank you. Thank you. Father Ihor, sorry for taking you a few minutes. <laughs> Father Ihor, please, we would ask you to, to join us. Thank you so much for your 
discussions. It was very, it was very interesting for me also. Um, because I understand that we are not closing in our ghetto, we need to be open to different kinds of thoughts. Um, it is true that in Ukraine today, we have no ecumenical dialogue at all. Uh, what we have, it's what was mentioned by Father Rostislav, we have this all Ukrainian Council of Churches and Religion Organization. They meet regularly, let's say once for three or four months, and they discuss all the social problem, but they are not discussing any theological problems. Uh, the other thoughts is that uh, maybe it should be not very popular, but maybe Father Rostislav would not agree with me, I think that only ecumenical church in Ukraine is a Greek Catholic church. We propose a lot of things to do together. We invite all orthodoxy to come and discuss different kinds of questions. It is for the long period of time I'm talking to my Orthodox friends from Moscow Patriarchate, let's start to discuss about baptizing because you are not recognizing the uh, sacraments of the Greek Catholics or even Roman Catholic Church. And it's not very easy. We also invite to, 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 to discuss the Orthodox Church of Ukraine. Sometimes they give a feedback that they are very open, but sometimes not, it's not happened. Let's, we have example, we present this joint international commission Orthodox and Catholic documents, and uh, we invited all bishops. And thanks to Father Rostislav, he came, and thanks to Bishop Mikhail, who is a representative of Constantinople Patriarchate in Kiev, but we didn't see any bishops from the Orthodox Church of Ukraine. I, I don't know why. I am, I am looking for that only as a Greek Catholic priest. I don't know what is inside uh, of that orthodoxy is going on. But if we are saying about, uh, as Father Augustino said, that um, Greek Catholics or Uniats, sometimes should be problems. I think we need to, to, to take a look inside of the orthodoxy. If you have no unity inside of the orthodoxy, how you can say to us that we are the problem? And in Ukraine, it's visually. We have two different, they are not talking to each other. Both of them are Orthodox church. Both of them are canonical church. Uh, so I think that in my case, as the Ukrainian Greek Catholic Church, we are trying to do our the best to bring this idea of unity to the Ukrainian society. And even if we think that uniatism is not a method that today could take a part, we agree with this. But what a new model you can, you can, you can uh, present to all Christianity. No, no one present any new model for today. We are ready to discuss about it. Uh, our representatives, our Ukrainian Greek Catholic priest is the member of the Joint International Commission, Father Ivan Betsko. We are inside of these discussions. We also want to have our local commission on theological dialogue, but no one is responding to us. Me, uh, concrete, concretely, myself, I have a blessing from my patriarch, from his Beatitude Sviatoslav, for the discussion with the Orthodox to make a commission, but no one is responding to us. Uh, of course, we are trying to do our best on our local level. 
Uh, in each seminary, we have a special courses about formation of ecumenical things for our students that should be priests this time, as for Andriy Kravchuk, Kravchuk asked. Uh, plus, besides this, uh, uh, for the priests that already serving, every upper he has uh, formation courses. So we are trying to do this also in a, in in ecumenical fields to teach them. Besides this, we trying to make some conferences and uh, round tables where we invite all our Orthodox friends. And thanks to some of them that they are coming because they are interesting. It's also good. But I didn't hear at least, I don't know, last 20 years that some Orthodox church in Ukraine doing some ecumenical conference or, or round tables of formation. We also want to come to Orthodox if they will, will invite us. We are ready to that. And uh, what I am not very agree with Professor Vasiliadis, I don't think that the Greek Catholics should be a bridge. I think that identity of the Greek Catholics is a normal, average local church. Uh, of course, we have some um, local ecclesiology that are not fitting too much with the Latin church and right now not fitting too much to the orthodoxy. But we want to change if, if it should be uh, uh, such position of all Christians that because we are in the International Commission of Orthodox and Catholic Church, and we are looking for something new if it is possible. But if not, the believers of our church living, praying, we have a saints, we have a structures, we have a people that, that are our people, and we are uh, serving there where they are living. That's our credo also. We need to be there where our people, the Greek Catholic people are living. Um, that's the answer also that we are taking part on a high level discussion and also we want to be on a local level discussions. I'm not sure if I missed something. Um, maybe you will memorize me or bring something. Father the slow. I, I would like to, if you have no objections, to give the word to Father Augustinus because we spend a lot of time in here because it's almost two hours. If just in terms of, yes, if please, I may please, say please, something, please. Uh, dear uh, Father, please, please, Slav. Please, Father. Uh, Father, if in terms of clarification, I didn't say in my previous uh, comment that the uh, Greek Catholic Church of Ukraine is the pro is a problem, right? It's just in terms of clarification, I didn't say such kind of, I didn't uh, use or had uh, this kind of uh, intention to, to mention about. Just, uh, uh, when I said self-critical, I was pointing at the Orthodox Church, not at, your, uh, at the uh, Greek Catholic Church. I mean, I said to be self-critical as Orthodox, right? Thank you very much. I also would like also to make a clarification. Uh, I insist that uh, uh, the Greek Catholic uh, uh, churches should be for us Orthodox and for the Latin uh, Catholicism a bridge, not for themselves. And uh, just one information, when two years ago I gave a, a lecture saying the importance for Orthodoxy of the um, uh, Greek Catholicism, uh, immediately from uh, a friend of mine, a theologian from Russia, he wrote a, 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 an, an almost uh, critical uh, uh, article saying that uh, um, the uh, Ukrainian uh, uh, Orthodox um, under the ecumenical patriarchate, uh, he didn't say um, uh, at that time, because the, it was before the Unification uh, Council, are going to be unions. 
And I said, I, because I am in contact with them, with many uh, theologians in, in the so-called uh, Moscovite uh, orthodoxy. Uh, how did you say this? Yes, uh, uh, a Greek uh, theologian said this. I said myself this, but I didn't mean that uh, this is the opinion uh, of uh, the Ukrainian Orthodox. And I realized at that time that uh, for uh, the so-called uh, Moscovite, Moscovite uh, uh, Orthodoxy, uh, it is uh, a negative uh, uh, element to be in connection or in contact with the Greek Catholicism. Because as I said, I realized that uh, because they developed their identity uh, in this uh, uh, anti-Catholic, uh, uh, anti-unit uh, um, uh, environment. So this is what I wanted to say, also as a clarification. Uh, Nicholas, um, uh, I think may uh, I also add something, Professor Vasiliadis? Could I also add something extra? Please, please. Uh, but, uh, as you said, Father Hor rightly before regarding the document of Balaman, I think that it was a chance that we missed it as Orthodox Church. I, uh, I, I um, say because the document of Balaman. Uh, was not received well because I, I do believe that it, uh, the Orthodox side didn't study in depth uh, this document, this is particular, this particular document. Uh, and the contrary, on the contrary, um, I think uh, it created uh, extra and more difficulties that it shouldn't. Uh, but I think because I studied uh, the document of Balamant. I think that uh, in the end of the day, it was a, a chance of um, uh, further cooperation and sharing that we missed it. And I do hope that in the, in the near future, we would be able, uh, I mean, as Orthodox and Catholics to, to, to produce um, um, such kind of a document and something about bridges and so on and so forth. I, I do believe that strongly that churches should destroy the walls of separation that they have they they have built over the centuries, not only the ages, using this kind of material in order to bridge uh, to, to build bridges. But we must not search uh, on both ranks of the river to find uh, identical. Uh, landscape. So from the one side of the river, we can have forests, deserts, and on the other side of the river, on the other rank of the river, we can have mountains, lakes, uh, seas. So it's not uniformity that saves, so, but communication for the sake of unity. Thank you again for... So I believe we have to close our meeting. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you everyone for sharing, especially to Father Ihor for his presentation. And uh, also allow me to make an uh, announcement for the next uh, open public lecture. It will uh, take place on Tuesday, February 1st, uh, at the same time, I mean 6 o'clock p.m. Uh, in our local time belt. And uh, Professor uh, Miltiadis Constantino will go in to present his report, Orthodox and Catholic in Common Bible Translation Projects. So thank you once more, everyone, and uh, to our listeners. And uh, may God bless you. All the best. Thank you. Goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Father.